Good afternoon. Thank you for another Children's Church Day and a Lord's Day. God has been so good. Um, he's been good to my family. I hope he's been good to y'all. Um, we have some special guests here with us today, and today will be our last lesson on Philip. If you have not watched the video, please watch the video. Children, please run, go get your Bibles. We're going to do the last part of Philip where he meets the Ethiopian man. It's a really great story. Um, if you've never heard of it, you need to read it first in your Bible, which we're going to do. But before we do that, let me welcome our visitors. We have some special visitors to today. Uh, as always, we have my grandson, Ryan. Say, hey, Ryan. Okay. Then we have Scarlett and Mary Ann and Harper Roden. Say, hey. They're all the and with that unison. Then we have Catalea, Ty, and Lou. Can you say hey to them? Oh, come on, y'all can do better. Say, hey, everybody. Oh, my gracious, they're safe. Okay, <clears throat> if you have any storehouse money, and in Children's Church, we have a little church that we put out in the back back there, and we teach tithes and we teach offerings, guys. Um, the Bible says bring the first fruits to the Lord. So, and I tell you guys, if you had a job this week, if you did a job, Ryan, you had a job this week. You worked with Uncle Brian, didn't you? And you made half five dollars, didn't you? So you are supposed to give some money, like fifty cent, to the Lord. Okay? So Ryan is supposed to give fifty cent of the money he made to the Lord, ten percent. But if you don't have a job, if you don't have chores, then you can just bring an offering to the Lord, which is what we teach to do here. Any of you bring offering today? Uh, we're recording at a special time today. This is literally Sunday afternoon. Um, so they weren't prepared for this, so it's okay. All right, so storehouse is done. Bibles, if you got a Bible, come and get your candy for your Bible. Come on, run get it. Piece of candy. Come on. Come on, get you a piece of candy. You can get it. Ryan, come on. Everybody, bring your Bible. Kids at home, get your Bibles out. Turn to Acts chapter 8. Come on. She got you a piece. All right, you got it? You reach in there and get it? All right, stop looking. Just grab. You got to grab and go. All right, thank you much. There we go. Okie dokie. All right, that'll work for us. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Um, and when we pray, guys, we teach close our eyes and bow our heads. Everybody turn around and be quiet. All right, we're getting ready to pray, so I need you to close your eyes and bow your heads. And guys... I'm going to ask you to say a special prayer for my daughter, Jessie. She's been very sick all weekend. Last weekend, her son Aiden was sick. And this weekend, she's very, very sick. So that kind of puts us all on standby. She has two twin-year-old boys, and her husband is leaving to go out of town to work today at 1 o'clock. And she's very sick. Please pray for her, and we'll do that. Does anybody want to open us in prayer? Scarlett, you want to? Come on. And just pray for Jesse and pray for our children's church today. All right? Here we go. Close your eyes, guys. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. I pray that we're safe. And I pray for Jesse and her twin boys, and I pray that she's doing well. I pray. thank you, Lord, that we can gather together and praise in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job, brother. Now, we've been singing a song. Um. And I think we're going to sing a little bit. Y'all come up here and help me sing. We're going to sing one verse, and we're going to do the chorus. Now, the chorus goes like this. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Get it, some of you get over here. Some of you come up here by me. Come on, get over here by me. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, come you want to stand right there? You can stand get close over here. Come on, get them in here, girls. You got them all? All right. Now it goes like this. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Can y'all sing that part with me? All right? And now when we get to that course, you've got to sing it really loud, okay? We're going to do a short version today, okay? Ready? Mm, 
I'm going to sing a chorus, verse for us. Ready? Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Here it goes. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Do that power again. And I say this time when you go power, go power. Can you do that? Can y'all do it, boys? All right, you ready? There is power, do it, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. Do it. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. Very good. Now you can go run and have another seat. There we go. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to read in my Bible, and I'm going to read the spoken word, and I know that you already guys found your Bible in Acts, but I'm going to read out of Mark chapter 16, and that's really going to be our spoken word. I couldn't remember which one it was, um, and I got my stuff right here now. So in Mark chapter 16, I'm going to read this, and I want you to read it after me, unless y'all want to find it. Y'all want to find Mark chapter 16? All right, some of you can help them. Help them find Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20 is going to be our spoken word today. All right, Mark chapter 16, verse 20, okay? I'm going to read it a couple of times, and they're here. They're still finding it here. I'm going to read it a couple of times, and they're going to get to read it out loud too. Here, Ryan, come get this Bible and read it. Find it for me, please. I need you to read it out loud so I can hear you go. All right, Mark chapter 16, verse 20 says, and this is the disciples are talking about, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the words with signs following. Amen. So there again, it said, and they went forth, and that's talking about all the disciples of Jesus, not just the 12, but all of everybody that followed Jesus. They went forth and preached Everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Ryan, do you have yours? Did you find it yet? Mark chapter 16, 20. Because I want to read out of that version. I want to hear that version. Did you find it yet? All right, come up here. I want to I hear that version. Put your Bible right here. I want to hear that version. All right, read it for me. Mark 16, 20. 16. Mark 16, 20. You know what? In this version, it doesn't have it. Okay, it's all right. In some of the versions, see, guys, that's the difference in the Bibles. I'm reading out of my King James Bible, and it does have 20, but in some of the newer versions, they didn't have those scriptures were eliminated because they were not in the original scriptures. They were kind of added by King James, and that's really strange. So when some of you go to look up, depending on what Bible you have, do you have it, Scarlett? Do you have verse 20? Okay. Scarlett, come read it for me. Scarlett's going to read it, but he's using the Holman Christian Standard, Ryan is right now, and it doesn't have that one. Read verse 20 for us. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be commended. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And they will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hand on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was t taken up to heaven and he sat at the right side of the hand of God. Okay, thank you, ma'am. She actually started in verse 16 and she read it, but that is the last, that's the last commandment 
that Jesus gave to all of his disciples. And he, if I start in verse 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It didn't say to every peace, people. It said to every creature, you preach the gospel. And that's, mine's in red. So Jesus is telling his disciples to go. And then Scarlet read all the stuff that would be happening there. And then in the last verse, it says, so they did it. They went forth and they preached everywhere. So I want you to read verse 20 with me. One time, verse 20, all right? And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the signs the word with signs following. Okay, very, very good. If you haven't watched the video, Philip, now's the time to watch it because we're going to be discussing him. And it's found in Acts chapter 8. You guys can turn over to Acts chapter 8. Where you were with Mark, go Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. Acts chapter 8. We're going to finish up Philip right now. All right, Acts chapter 8, and we are going to start in the middle of the chapter with verse 26 because we read all about Philip going to Samaria. We read about Simon to begin with. So now we're going to read the last part of what Philip did, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Ethiopian. All right, here we go. Ready? Now, listen, guys, I haven't said this in a long, long time, but I'm going to say it now, and this is even for the kids at home. When anybody is reading from the Word of God, doesn't matter if it's me, Brother Johnny this morning, anytime anybody is reading from the Word of God, even your mom, your dad, your Sunday school teacher, it doesn't matter. When you're reading from the Word of God, you need to show respect because if you're playing, if you're talking, you are disrespecting God's Word. You're not disrespecting Miss Cheryl. It's God's Word that's being read, okay? So, and we read out loud here, guys, because... The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. That means we speak it out loud so we can hear it. Okay? So we're going to start with verse 26 and read the rest of the chapter. Give a few points, and i got a small activity up here I want to do. We're going to have a short children's church today. Miss Melissa doesn't think I can do it, do you, Miss Melissa? All right, let's see. Okay. I'm on a time, I'm on a time thing here today. My clock, you know what the problem's been, Miss Melissa? My clock's not up there, so I can't see the time. That's the problem. So it's not my fault. Look, Joshua, put it up there. I knew he would. All righty. Let's start with verse 26. Ready? And the angel of the Lord spake to Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. It's a desert road. And so he arose, and he went. And behold, a man, an Ethiopian, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, and he was reading from Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, now here's what the Spirit told Philip to do. So he told Philip, he said, get up and go down this desert road. And when he did, he saw this Ethiopian man, okay? And this Ethiopian man was sitting in this nice, nice, beautiful chariot. You know why I know it was nice? Because he kept all the treasure, all the money of the queen. So that man had to be a rich man. But here's an interesting fact about that Ethiopian it said that he had been in Jerusalem worshiping. Wow, he wasn't a Jew. He wasn't a Christian, but he was worshiping God even when he wasn't a Christian. That's very important. I want you to remember that in verse 28. He was returning after he had been to Jerusalem. All right, then verse 29, look at it. And Philip said unto, and the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading from the prophet Isaiah. And Philip said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, Well, how can I, except some man should guide me or teach me? 
And he desired or he asked Philip that he would come up and sit with him in his chariot. Now the place of the scripture where he was reading was this. And Scarlett, I need you to look at this scripture really closely because that's what I want you to read whenever you get to be Ethiopian, okay? The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Those are the two verses I want you to read. If you need to mark them, you can mark them. You want to mark them? There's your pencil. All right. Those are the two verses when you get to be the Ethiopian that you're going to read from. Okay. All right, look at verse 34. And the eunuch, this Ethiopian was a eunuch. That means... He was never going to get married, okay? He had dedicated himself to the queen, so he wasn't going to get married. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, or I ask of thee, whom speaketh the prophet of this? Does he speak of himself or some other man? Now look at verse 35, very important verse. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, who? The good news of Jesus. Philip started right there in that scripture and started preaching to him the good news of Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, a, a thing of water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. Can I be baptized there? What stops me? What hinders me? And Philip said, now look at this verse. This is important too, 37. And Philip said, If thou believe with all thine heart, you may. And he answered and said, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Wow. He believed in Jesus, that Jesus was the Son of God. He believed that Jesus came and died on the sins of on the cross for all of his sins. And he believed that Jesus rose three days and went back to heaven. He believed that. And he believed that he needed a Savior and Jesus was that Savior. And he confessed that by saying, I do believe. And he got saved. Then 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way sad. How did he go? How did the eunuch leave? Happy, rejoicing, singing praises to God because his sins had been washed away. Verse 40, but Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached. He's still preaching in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Isn't that an amazing story? Let me ask you a couple questions here. The Spirit of the Lord told Philip to get up right then and to go down this desert road. What do you think would happen if Philip said, Oh, Lord, I'm too tired. I don't want to go right now. What would have happened? Would... He would have missed the eunuch, wouldn't he? But he got up right then and he started walking down the road. Did Philip know where he was going? Nope. Sometimes God tells us to do stuff that we don't know why we're doing it, but we're just supposed to do it, aren't we? And that's what happened to Philip. And he started going down this road and he didn't know why he was going down this road. Okay? And you know what? He didn't moan and groan and say, Lord, but I can't do this. Lord, I'm so tired. How many times, let me ask you a question. How many times did mama or daddy tell you to do something and you don't do it right away because you're just so tired, I can't do that? How many of you do that? Whoa, is that called disobedience? It is. Obedience means you do it right away whenever they tell you to do it. Does the Bible say obey your father and mother? So if you didn't obey right away, was it a sin? You're right. You're right. So if Philip didn't get up and obey right away, he would have missed the blessing of baptizing that eunuch, wouldn't he have? Yes, he would have. 
okay? So Philip goes to the desert. He's on the road, and he sees a chariot. And he looks at that beautiful chariot, and he goes, wow. And then what did the Spirit tell Philip to do? Go walk beside that chariot. So Philip just started walking by that chariot, and he's just walking, and he heard something. He heard that man reading from the scrolls. Now, see, back then, this is a pretty Bible, isn't it? You like my Bible? This is a new Bible cover. But back then, they didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the Word. They had something like a scroll, which kind of looked like this. It was the Word of God written down in the Old Testament. Moses wrote that. kind of looked like this. Y'all see the scroll? You see the scroll? And they would open it like this, and they would turn it like this, and they would find the place, and they would read from it. Do you remember the book of the Bible that that eunuch was reading from? Isaiah, you're exactly right. He was reading from Isaiah, and he had a hard time understanding it. Now, let me ask you a question. This Ethiopian, he wasn't a Christian, was he? Nope. But where had he been? Where had he been? He was worshiping in Jerusalem where the temple was. Now, because he wasn't a Jew, he couldn't go in the first part of the, the back part of the temple, but he could go in the first part because the outer part of the, the temple walls there, it was called the Gentile court as a people that wasn't Jews. But he went and worshiped God, but he wasn't a Christian. So did you know that that tells me that people can go to church and go to church and worship God in church and sing praise songs and do all that? They can even read their Bibles and do all that and still not be Christians. Did you know that? To be a Christian, you have to do something, don't you? Right? And so Philip is going to get the chance to tell this guy who he's reading about, okay? Now, if there was a kid jogging or riding a bike and God told you, Scarlett, to go run beside him, would you? Wouldn't that be crazy? Just go run beside him. Go run with him. Well, Lord, I don't know. It would probably be crazy, wouldn't it? Well, wait, not a stranger. Let's say, let's say you're at school and y'all are out on the playground and that kid's just running and doing certain games and something in your spirit said, Scarlett, you need to go over there to Luke. And you know who Luke is, but you don't know him. But you said, Scarlett, you need to go over there to Luke and just walk and talk with him. Would you do it? Or would you say, oh, God, I don't know him. God, he's not a pretty boy. Or let's say it was a girl and her name was Sarah. Sarah... God, look at her. She's got ugly clothes on. No, I can't do that. I don't know her. I can't go sit beside her in the lunch room. Was that what you would say? If something inside your spirit kept saying, somebody needs to go sit with her. I need to go sit with her and talk to her. Part of you would say, no, I don't want to do that. That's what I'm telling you what Scarlett said in case you couldn't hear. Part of you would say, no, I don't want to do that. But the other part of you is saying, ah, uh, I probably need to, right? So we're deciding whether we need to do it or not. Did Philip have to decide whether he was going to do that or not? He didn't. He just did it, didn't he? I want to be one day where the Spirit tells me something and I feel like something. Now let me tell you something. Would the devil be the one telling you to go speak to that girl and be kind to him? No. The devil don't want you to be kind to nobody. So here's the deal. So, so we've got to get to the place where when they're at school and you see that somebody needs some help and you feel like you need to go help them, you need to go do it. So let's say, Scarlett, that you go over there and you sit by Sarah at the lunch table and you don't talk or nothing and you hear her just talking to herself and then in a few minutes you start talking to her. And y'all become, you start telling her about things and you tell her about your church and your children's church and your mom and dad and you tell her about Jesus and all this stuff. And the girl says, well, I've been wanting to go to church. Tell me about it. And you get to tell her about Jesus. And then all of a sudden she wants to get saved. Wow, would that not be awesome? Do you believe that could happen today? It sure can. But you know what? We as little kids and even adults... We, we're too afraid to go up and talk to somebody about Jesus, aren't we? You, we're, what are some of the things we're afraid of? 
What's, what's going to happen if we go up and ask somebody and start talking to them and say, you know what, God has been so good to me. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. What would, what would be the worst thing that could happen? Tell me some bad things that could happen if you start doing that. Humiliated. Popularity. You won't be popular no more. Okay, what else? They might laugh in your face. They think you're weird. Okay, what else? You're right. All those things we think of. We think of those things. Your mama's sitting right here. Let me ask her a question. I'm going to put her in this here. Let me ask you. If the spirit you was at work and you saw this person sitting there and, you, and something says, I need to go ask them, can I pray with them? Would you do it immediately or would you start being afraid? Or would you start questioning and say, oh, I don't know about that. They're going to think I'm weird. I, what would you do? What's your first response? I would think about it. I would question it and I would think about it and weigh the good and the bad of it. She would think about it and she would weigh the goods and the bads. Well, what are the bads? Okay, that's true. What are the goods? That's exactly right. You're right. So we have to get to the place where we say, you know, Lord, if the Holy Spirit tells me to do something, I want to do that. I want to do what the Holy Spirit tells me. Is that good? Can we start trying to work towards doing that? You know, I'd be in the hospital with my mom a lot. I'd have to take her to the ER a lot. And, and there'd be some times, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm an old Christian. I'm old I'm older than anybody in this room. Much older than anybody in this room. And I've been in this church here for 54 years. I was six years old when we came to this church. Now, and I got saved at 12, and I served the Lord the most I could. I mean, I made some bad mistakes and, and sinned some, but I was always saved, and the Lord always kept me and took care of me. But here's the deal. Even, it doesn't matter how old of a Christian you are, it doesn't matter. You still get nervous and afraid. That's crazy though, ain't it? See, when I'd take my mom to those hospitals sometimes in the ER and I'd look over there and I'd see somebody sick and this mindset would come in me and say, hey, why don't you go in there and ask them, can you pray for them? See, I wouldn't be a job, it wouldn't be my job, I would be, I would be a visitor. And I'd go, oh my gosh, they might think I'm crazy. They might think I'm weird. What if they laugh in my face? No, I can't do that. And I'd walk by that room two and three times, wrestling in my mind. No, no. Oh, and then it says, yes, you need to go ask him to pray. And finally, finally, I'd stop wrestling. I'd say, okay. And I'd walk in there. And, and you think Miss Cheryl's bold. Miss Cheryl's really not bold all the time. I'm not. I have to pray for the Lord to help me to be bold. And you know what? If you pray for the Lord to ask you, if you ask the Lord to help you be bold, he will give you boldness and courage. He'll help you do it. And I said, okay, Lord, help me. And I'd go in that room and I'd say, can I just pray for y'all? And they'd go, we would love for you to pray with us. Thank you. And I would pray for them people. And I'd get to learn their names. And, and it was a great thing. We need to start being more like that where we don't wrestle. Philip didn't, did he? He was ready to tell about Jesus no matter what. And do you know, Philip didn't know that he would walk up to this chariot who he was going to find, did he? He could have found somebody that would have murdered him, couldn't he have? He could have found somebody that said, get away from me, don't talk to me, couldn't he have? But God, let me tell you this, whenever God tells you to do something, he's already made a way for you to do it. If God's already placed it in your heart and says, I want you to do that, he's already gave you everything you need to go do it. If God tells you to do something, he's going to help you do it. And we get so afraid, but we shouldn't, should we? That's right. Philip knew what God told him. He trusted him. He obeyed. That was pretty awesome. And because of that, Philip is called Philip the Evangelist, okay? So the Ethiopian, all right, let's play this little game. Guard it. Come up here. Bring your Bible to that place where I showed you. All right. You ready, Miss Melissa? We're going to move to these chairs. 
Scarlet is going to be the Ethiopian, and here's your nice chariot. You got to sit right here. Okay, I'm gonna give her a scroll. All right, all right. Here's your scroll. You got it? Okay, you got it. All right. Now she's in the chariot. Okay. Come here, Catalea. Catalea is gonna be Philip. Now I know we're using girls, but I can't help it. We're just using girls. All right. Come on, Philip. Catalea is going to be Philip. Are you ready, Philip? All right. Now, here's what you're going to do. You ready, Miss Melissa? The Spirit's going to tell you to go up by the chariot and walk along by the chariot, okay? And so you're going to walk right up here, and you're just going to march in place. Can you do that? I don't know how to march. Like this. Can you do that? So you're going to walk right up here and do like this. All right, you ready? Until Philip, until the Ethiopian, and then when I tell you, you're going to say, do you know what you're reading? Okay? And then when you say that, then he's going to say, no, will you tell me? And then you're going to get in the chair. Okay? All right, you ready? You ready, Miss Melissa? All right. Go, Philip. All right, Ethiopian, read your verses. The Enoch was reading, we... He was led like a sheep to the slaughter as a, a lamb before it is sheared is silent. So he did not open his mouth in the humiliation. Humiliation, He was deprived of justice. Then you're going to say, do you know what you're reading? Do you know what you're reading? No, will you tell me? Yes. All right. Say, come up here in the chariot. Come up here in the chariot. All right, there we go. All right. Now, what does the Bible say happen next? What happens next? He, he we, got saved and he's rejoiced. Yeah, but before he got saved and rejoiced, Philip did what to the Ethiopian? He told him all about Jesus. You start telling, you start, you got to tell you got to tell the Ethiopian all about Jesus. Can you tell him how much you say? Say, Jesus loves you. Tell him. Jesus loves you and he died on the cross for your sins. And he, he, and he'll let you live forever and ever. You have to believe in him and confess him. Mm -hmm. And then you go, look, there's water. Look, there's water. Can I be baptized now? Can I be baptized now? And what do you say? If you believe that Jesus is God's son and died on the cross. If you believe in God, God's... That Jesus was God's son. Jesus was God's son and he, and he died, for the, died on the cross. What do you say? I do. I believe that Jesus was God's son and he died for my sins. I believe Jesus was God's son and he died for my sins. Then you say, stop, chariot driver. Stop, chariot driver. And then you put your Bible down and y'all walk out to the water. There you go. Wasn't that cool? Wasn't that awesome? Huh? All right, you girls can have a seat. Was that fun? That's pretty cool, wasn't it? It was pretty cool. Okay. So what is my challenge for us today? And I told you, Miss Melissa, we're coming to a close. Say hallelujah, Miss Melissa. Hallelujah. <laughs> the shortest children's church I think we've done yet. Okay, here's the deal. Here's my challenge to us today, okay? Here's my challenge to all of us. When we're closing out on Philip, okay? Let's don't have a heart like Simon. Do you remember Simon, the first part of chapter 8, when Yes, he thought he could buy the gifts of God. And he, he, got, he got baptized and all. But the deal is, he was wrong. His heart was wrong. His heart was not right. And Peter looked at him and said, get your heart right. You better repent because your heart's not right. But the Ethiopian, the eunuch, his heart was ready to receive Jesus, wasn't And Philip was ready to tell him about Jesus, wasn't he? So we started out our lesson, we started out by planting the seeds. If you watched it, we planted the seeds, then we watered and fertilized, and then we got the harvest. 
okay? We are always supposed to be planting the seed of Jesus. How do we plant seed? Tell them about Jesus. Tell them what God's done for you. Pray during your lunch. Let me ask you. In school, before you eat your lunch, how many of you say a prayer first? Ryan, we got to start doing that, okay? Is that planting a seed to somebody that doesn't know about that? Yes, it is. Okay. Then the next time, they say, why, why do you pray every time? Then you get to water that seed by saying, because I'm thankful that God gave me food to eat, and I want to remind, I want to be thankful every time. Is that watering the seed? Okay. And then the next time they're sitting there all by themselves, Scarlet, and something comes in you and says, man, I might need to go sit by that Sarah, but she really didn't smell too good today. But you do it anyway, and you start talking to her, and you tell her how good Jesus is, and you tell her about your serving God and going to church and reading your Bible and how God blessed your family. And she goes, well, I want to know about that. Tell me more. Is that harvesting? It is. So our challenge today is, guys, let's go preach the good news. Please, let's go tell people about Jesus. Can we do that? All right. I did this last week. I'm going to close this week the same way. We're going to close in a prayer. Um, I hope last week I did this, and I don't know if anybody did that or not. They haven't had a full week yet to do it, or you maybe you have. Let's pray, and let's come down to the altar and pray today, okay, with this group. And let's, let me ask you something. Don't come do this if you don't mean it, okay? If you don't mean it, don't. Let's ask God to give us the boldness and the courage to tell one person this week how good Jesus has been to you and how good God is and how he loves you. If that's just planting, watering, or you get to tell them the whole story, either one, okay? Y'all want to do that? All right, let's come to the altar and pray. I'll give you a few minutes by yourself. In Children's Church, guys, we always have an invitation. We always normally have music playing with our invitation. And I give the kids an opportunity to come to the altar and to pray anything that they need. Our older kids normally come and lay hands on them and pray. So as our kids are praying now, this is what we do every week. So I'm going to give them a few minutes. Pray and ask God to give you the boldness, the courage, that he would bring somebody into your life this week. Somebody, anybody that you could tell them about God, that you could plant a seed, and that, Lord, even let me water a seed somewhere, and maybe, God, if you would help me to tell them all the way about Jesus and tell them that they need to be saved and how great it is to be saved, ask you to help me do that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. That's it for today. Um, next week, uh, we will per se not have a children's church uh, thing. We're going to take a break. We have one, one um, last week of June, we will not have a children's church. I may uh, record something and put out there for you to see. I have a, a, an illustration that I'd really like to share with you before we start back in children's church. And then we are going to start children's church back in July, but not the first week. There you go. You can clap. The first week will be family week where we are in with all of our communion Sunday. But don't forget the worksheets that Miss Melissa is doing. Did y'all like the worksheets today? They were awesome, wasn't they? Don't forget the worksheets. They're a great tool. We're going to be using them the first Sunday. So we'll see you real soon. Love you. Say God is good. And let's end with my favorite saying. What is it? Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. See you guys later.